Hi, I'm Kurt, and this is my truck. It's a 2018 Ram. I've been a heavy equipment mechanic for over 30 years. I'm in Ramona, California, soon to be in Conroe, Texas. I've moved most of all the stuff already to Texas and stuff, and I try to keep the bare minimum on right now. So what I'm carrying right now is just enough tools to do what I need to do. Probably the main reason that I'm leaving California, it's just so unaffordable and unrealistic. And who wants to pay $7 a gallon for diesel? If you can pay less than that for it in Texas, This truck tour is proudly produced by Tecamo and sponsored by Fortis HD. Whether you like to buy online, call us or message us. We'll help you out. So I want to show you my truck. There's not much to say about the front seat. You know, it's just got all the vinyl seats and stuff so you don't have to wreck all that. And I'll be honest with you, I really like the style of the Ford. I like the interior. It's got way, my guy that worked for me bought one. And man, I died when I saw that. I couldn't believe I rode in this truck. It's like the, he had twice the cab I had. But I was still would have bought a Ram because I like the Cummins and that's what I like. And I bought this one without a PTO, unfortunately. So I haven't got to putting one of those on yet. Because I would definitely buy the Ram again. I love the Ford front grille and stuff too. I like the style, the look of the Ford. But if they just had a Cummins in it, I'd be all over that. I took out the back seat and stuff because I, I would never need that. With this bed here, trying to get everything on it that you can. You know, I, the way I see it, make use of the space you got the best you can. I usually pile this thing up high. You know, like I say, I am traveling a lot right now, going back and forth to Texas, so I'm trying to keep things as loose as I can, or as light as I can. The top drawer, I just use it for paperwork and stuff like that, you know, to catch all for other papers and stuff. Here, I've just, I got a depth gauge and some calipers and another set of calipers, calculator. This is just some hydraulic cylinder repair tools right here. Some electrical conduit installers right here. For a long time, it's wherever I can get it to fit, you know. It needs to go on the truck, well, it was hard to close the drawers on all of them, though. So, really tried to do a little better. This one, I've got some annular bits and welding rod in here and stuff. And feeler gauges and stuff like that. And rod, annular drill bits for my magnetic drill. This one is just all the caterpillar, basically all the caterpillar O-rings and just a few seal kits here. Some seal insulation tools and stuff. Loctite, Permatex, Gorilla Glue, drill bits, just the regular, I think it goes up to inch and an eighth. Thermal guns. Here's more O-rings and stuff. There's eighth inch, three thirty second, sixteenth inch O-rings. And then another smaller pack. Relay test kit. I really, really like that thing. Uh, this one's an ES, it says ES191, but it's just, it's very convenient. There's probably, I've had this one for a while, I'm sure there's probably something else on the market now that's 10 clicks it does. It, it'll it'll go run and test it 10 different times and it'll give you if it's a good or bad. And it's just a real cut and dry deal. And most of them will fit right in here, but it has adapters and whatnot. Just a good tool. Here a while back, I got a bolt that I just couldn't get in there. It was on the front of a Caterpillar engine in a water truck. And I got this online, and this little pencil grinder, man, was the, I, I hear that there's a whole lot better ones than that, but boy, it really did the job. I could not get in there with anything else, and I didn't want to tear the whole front off it. So that worked out good. So I was glad. I love them on my Tabo. I use it for just about everything. Respirators. Then like the older you get, you wish you had these when you were young, or were you using them at least. Some metric zerts and stuff, and there's also fuel line things and stuff, you know, the rivers on the John Deere's and whatnot, and a lot of them have that. And miscellaneous stuff, there's a couple of test valves, or check valves for testing fuel system. There's some tap and dies down here on the bottom, metric and American. I have a laptop that's got the John Deere stuff on it. The Caterpillar, it's got the, I tried to put them on one laptop, crashed the hard drive, so now I have two for that stuff. A lot of technology for me, I'm working on it, but I have all the stuff to do it with. Just have to keep practicing in it. But I, I see things going that way in a big way, and I'd like to stay up with it. You know, I have a Snap-on three-quarter ratchet that I bought, for, I don't know, 30 years ago probably. And it's got a long handle on it, and it flexes like crazy. I hate it. I took it off the truck. I saw this guy online. It's an easy red, and they make a lot of good tools, you know. I thought being that it's extendable, I thought that's going to be a piece of but actually it's not. It's very convenient, really nice, and you can get in tight places with it and stuff. If I want to put the hurt on something, I've got a 
one inch drive snap on and it's got a real hard pipe on it it doesn't flex at all and if i need to i'll put an adapter and go down to three quarter with it but that's my favorite ratchet that snap on one actually got this recently i always had a stainless steel one in the back of the truck and the hose rotted on it all the time but this i picked it up at the swap market the other day and when i was in texas last i thought man that is just what i need you know it's not got a real long hose on it but it'd be great for putting a vacuum on a hydraulic tank and stuff you know but i'll probably use it to clean up the truck first this little umbrella right here is awesome amazon's got it my buddy had told me about it and it's very cool it's five foot it's magnetic you can set it on the side of the truck or whatever wherever you're working at and you'll have shade right there so that's pretty sweet I've got a couple umbrellas in the back that swing out and do all that, but this one's handy because you never have to be in the sun pretty much with that. I like the face shield now. Anytime I'm grinding and stuff, I'm real big on safety glasses and wearing that guy. Then here's one, same thing, but for a torch. Extra coveralls. Schumacher, that's how you pronounce it, I guess. I like that thing. I used to have a snap-on. I had two snap-on ones, and both of them failed, so I'm sure that one will too eventually. Here's just a hydraulic test kit. I actually just got this one because all my stuff is in Texas. Ordered it and it came the next day. And I honestly haven't used this one. My buddy Josh has got one. And I borrowed his to do the job with and ordered one. But it works out awesome. I mean, it worked really good. It had everything I needed in it. And for 30 years, I've collected every little hydraulic special fitting I've ever made or put together or whatever. And I can just about do most all of it with this right here. So... If I was able to get this back when I was younger, I would have got it for sure. Hard working dude, and it seems like to always go for me. Sometimes I might jump two or three things in a week without charging it. I'm a big fan of bags, freezer bags, for labeling stuff and putting parts in, you know. Sometimes you tear something apart and you don't get back to it for 30 days or whatever. It's just nice to have a place to put everything. Brazen rod in here. I think that's pretty much got this side. I have probably about 10 of these, and... Sometimes I'll leave them on the machine and drive off and forget about them or whatever, but they're great. I do. I like them. I got probably four of them on the charger right now. These are Braun and the Harbor Freight sells them. There's a lot of companies that make them, but I've been buying them from them for, well, since they came out with them, probably at least five years now, I think. You leave them on the machine more than anything else, but I probably still have at least 10 right now, and I really do like them. Uh, you know, I got these at Costco one time I was up there, and they work pretty good too. If you got electric, they're pretty bright. They don't last as long as these do. Why do you have the beans? Oh, gotta have beans. You gotta have beans. I'm not from Texas. We love beans. <laughs> Besides that, when you're out in the middle of somewhere, you know, and the last thing you want to do is roll up all your tools, all your mess, and go to town to get something to eat. If I didn't think I was going to be out all day and something happened, I like to have something to fall back on. There's nothing trying to finish a, a job and you're starving to death. So beans, they're good forever, man. Ranch style beans, Fort Worth, Texas. These right here are great. You know, you can have beans in the truck for two years, you know, still good. Probably longer. I like the C4s, they my favorite energy drink. And at Costco, I got a truck driver turn me on to these one time. And these little guys right here, you pop them in an eight ounce bottle of water, you know, shake it up real good and then, and it doesn't taste bad at all. They're different flavors and a lot of B12 stuff in it. I think it has 200 things of caffeine probably. Sometimes after that bean lunch, you know, you need a little pick-me-up, so. With this bed, it's hard to find boxes and stuff that'll fit in here, so that's a big search. And when you find something, you gotta beat it to death to make things work, you know, and modify it. And, uh, back here, it's real snap-ons. There's some deeps that are that are uh, 12 point and some shallows that are 12 point. Matco, it's all 3 8 drive, 3 8 drive. I keep a lot of spare batteries there. Not all my stuff snap-on. There's good tools everywhere. You know, I'm not a stuck on snap-on, but they're very good tools. I buy just about everything, honestly. Matt go 12-point sockets back here to the thin walls. You know, it seems like you need thin walls and you need 12 points sometimes. Sometimes you just need a chrome thin wall. Snap-on screwdrivers, but this right here is all Carlisle, I think is the brand they got. And there's some snap-on stuff in here, but. And this set right here, this is that icon from Harbor Freight. I broke one here, but that was probably my fault. If you ever go to Harbor Freight and you want to take a tool back, I took that back yesterday. And they said, no, you got to bring the whole kit. You can't just bring the broken part. We sell it as a kit, so bring the whole thing. <laughs> little Icon ratchet here. It's a pretty nice little ratchet. I like it. This old cheap ratchet right here is my favorite quarter-inch drive. I think it's a Crescent or Master Grip or something. But I like the fact you can do that. You know, it's not nearly as fine tooth as a lot of them, but I don't know. I probably just had it for so long. It's my go-to, honestly. 
I like this ratchet right here. A buddy of mine gave this to me. It's pretty cool being able to offset it and stuff. I'm sure Tyler the tool man, <laughs> he probably has a dozen of those. Here's a quick story. This ratchet right here was the first snap-on ratchet I ever bought. I think it was 1982 or something. And it was a big deal because it's a fine spline ratchet. It's a 32 teeth fine spline ratchet, you know, and I think what we got now, 72 and stuff, right? It's still been a good ratchet. I've never been crazy about the plastic thing on top, but I've never broke it. Anyway, these are just regular snap-ons and then snap-on stubbies. And these are snap-on long wrenches. This little Ingersoll right here is a really good for getting broken bolts and stuff out of. And I like him a lot too. I have a snap-on one just like it that's a straight one. Double this on the other truck at home. Using those 12 batteries or the nines on it, you know, because it has a, I do notice that it'll fall off. You know, I know that uh, Cam, he has a problem now with Milwaukee tools or whatever, but uh, Cam, these are good tools. I try not to leave my batteries stuck on them when I'm traveling. I try to take them out. I think that helps a little bit, but I actually love my three-quarter drive. I love the one-inch drive, and I've got a short shank and a couple of drills, and I like the three-inch drive on here, too. I think if a guy's just starting out, if he bought himself a few sets of those Icon ranches, I think that would be a good affordable way to get started. They don't stretch real bad and you know it's not like they're real cheap ones that they used to have. They seem to be pretty good tools. I bought some of them. So I know when you're starting out it's hard to reach out there and buy everything snap on or off the bat but if a guy could afford it yeah I'd go that way for sure. And here's just basically a pipe goop, more Loctite and stuff like that, dielectric grease, silicone and weather stripping adhesive tapes. Here's just a whole bunch of tire goodies, scrapers and stuff like that. And I like vice grip for pliers, but I bought other brands too, but I really like vice grip. In the 80s, I bought this from a snap-on truck and it's been my favorite stripper. Although I do have a, a new one here from snap-on that I like it too, but it's kind of hard to read those little numbers when you get a little older. So here's a bigger snap ring pliers here. This is just overflow Allens. Here's, these are all snap-on. Back on the concrete pumps, we really had to use a lot of these larger ones in the metric. These are probably half snap-on, half Armstrong. I really like crow's foot wrenches. You don't need it until you need it. When you need it, it's nice to have it, you know? And some extra equipment keys. A gasket punch right here, a Mac gasket punch. and These are just disc grinders and stuff. Uh, here's a bunch of nice, cheap, long-reach pliers and stuff. Sometimes you need them, and it's nice. A few more bars, a long 3-8 snap-on extension. I see somebody else uses crayons, too. One, I think it was one of your channels. Cam. Cam? Oh, okay, well, that's a good idea, Cam. <laughs> I like using that, too. More crow's feet and stuff, and some mini ratchet wrenches and tube wrenches and whatnot. And this is kind of a catch-all. Then over here is just basically chemicals and stuff, you know, brake cleaners and... What's the Vaseline for? Uh, just for having fun <laughs> with cylinders. Now, I like to rebuild cylinders with that if I can. I like to, just because it's, it keeps my hands cleaner. I just like it. So I have a bigger bottle for those really tough days. And so this here, I just filled it up with some graphite grease. And everybody's gotta have a spray bottle full of soap and water, right? So Milwaukee heat gun. I really like the torch kind of better. I feel a whole lot more comfortable putting this in there to heat up some shrink tubing. Gloves and sanding paper strips. And, and there's some snap-on punches and stuff and files. And this guy right here, I've had him for probably 25 years at least. It's a Craftsman 5 8 And see how flat it is there? I use it for everything. I never put a point on it. I like to have it blunt like that. Works good. Sometimes you need a place to put races in or whatever. But it's probably, I use this probably a couple times a week. Almost, I'd use it for everything. You'd just be surprised, you know? This one I use a lot for putting in races too. Bigger races, you know? By the way, these are the best clamps, man. The Bessie clamps, man, I just absolutely love them. And here, here's just pulling out relays with pliers. These guys are for hydraulic spool valves and stuff. It's got two little dentures here for them to hold the tiny little balls with a little bit of grease while you put it together. This is kind of a catch-all here. Here's just extra electrical fittings and stuff like that. Light bulbs, switches, test leads, diodes. 
These are gear wrench. These are blue point. Those are really nice. I like those. These here, I really like these snap-on wrenches right here. I wouldn't buy anybody else's brand for these. I just love it, socket type. Bonnie wrenches, I don't know if y'all have them in y'all's part of the country, but these are great knock wrenches. Bonnie's not around no more, but almost every one of these are Bonnie. And boy, they've just, they've been around since dirt and they're just the best knock wrenches and they're thin, you know? Great for hydraulic lines. Out here, you know, the, it's kind of hard to, we have a snap-on guy here and I think he stays late on Friday nights, like at nine o'clock in his truck or whatever for people to come up like me that are just out there since we don't have a shop for him to come rolling up into. But for the most part, if I need a snap-on tool or broke one or something and I need it, I'll just, any truck I see, I'll, I'll follow him until he stops. <laughs> when he stops, I'll, I'll go get it. This is down here just to catch all the electrical stuff, you know, lights and wire and solenoids and just whatever. This here, there's my power probe up here. This Sordless terminals, that's some more electrical stuff, some brass fittings. Uh, it's from the antifreeze, you know, the vacuum to suck them in. And this one right here is more snap ring pliers. And this right here is nice snap ring bushing driver kit. That's an old kit. Just an extra box, I hadn't put anything in yet. But I saw it, it was on sale, and I thought it was cool, so I got it. Reflectors, and mostly back here, there's gonna be kits of sockets and stuff, you know, one inch drive and three quarter drives all up here. This metal box has got pullers in it, OTC pullers and stuff, snap-on pullers. This one's got my regulators in it for the torch, and extra air hose extension. Half inch hose here, I like that for my Ingersoll one inch drive, but Honestly, I don't even care it anymore now. And then the Trailblazer, Miller. Good old Wilton Vice, I broke it the other day. I want you to know that broke my heart when I broke that. I, I like my Wilton Vices. This year, I just started cleaning this out this morning before you guys come. There's the one inch snap on that I got. I don't even carry the three quarter one no more, but this never flexes or nothing. Gosh, I've changed the carburetor on this one and this one here, I'm still trying to get a carburetor for. The gas nowadays, it's just horrible, man. And so when I go to Texas, I stop over at Bucky's and I bring me about three, five gallon jugs, you know, and get that, uh, I get ethanol free and I carry it back and use it in those guys. I always try to carry at least one five gallon bucket that's empty. I really like carrying the white buckets more than anything because if I'm draining something and I'm looking for something, it's a whole lot easier to see something in the bottom of a white bucket than it is a black bucket. These guys right here, got this another at a garage sale or something years ago. And I just love it, man. I wish I had more of them from Milwaukee Tool Equipment Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's just a, what's well, a six ton, you can use it as a jack, but it wear a guy out, you know, but it's nice when you jack it up and you put it underneath the axle or something or whatever you're working on. But it's just nice that you can adjust it right up to it in case the jack bleeds off or whatever. And I really wish I had a bigger one than that too. And some shackles and chains down there, a little bit of scrap iron. And then here's my, Umbrellas, my Tony Bahama umbrellas. I like to be flashy when you're out there, you know. And uh, I just put them out. I put one of them here, and I can swing this out, you know, over the back where I'm working. This one here, I can raise it up and swing it out over. I always work off the side of the truck anyway, so I really want a cloud. But my buddy's, he's got one, but he says he doesn't. I think he likes that magnetic one more than he does anything. The 10 foot cloud, and I know it's great for shade and stuff, but I think it's kind of a hassle. Here's some bars, OTC bars. Tire bar, another tire bar. I've had it since 1990, 1982. And that one, the deck collector? <laughs> a few aluminum rigid pipe wrenches, but I, I don't have a 36 inch or a 48. These right here are pretty cool. I just cut up some ABS pipe and put it in there for racks to hold stuff, 12 pound hammer. And it fits pretty good. Works pretty good. And there's my pop-up right here. It's a 12 by 12 or 13 by 13, I think it is. The sun rots them up here, rots the case on them. But man, they're nice, they're easy to set up. I love them. Keep my torch in here. The crane, I don't have a remote crane, so usually I keep the cord and stuff wrapped up in here. Just an older auto crane, it's a, I think it's 3,000 something pounds all it is. Here's my water. I crack the valve, I like it. Washing my hands, but you know, mixing antifreeze and stuff like that too. So here's just a bunch of diagrander 
brushes and flapper wheels and whatnot. Here, like I say, space is wherever you can make it. So filter wrenches, tire stuff, little pads for the die grinders, hose clamps, battery lugs and stuff, and half a dozen ones. This has got grease gun stuff in it. This is just miscellaneous stuff. More battery terminal stuff. That's just brass pieces. Metric. And there's a bunch of carbide cutters and drills and JIC fittings and butt plugs. You know, from sticking in hydraulic hoses or from other places, I'm sure. Yeah, with the Vaseline, right? <laughs> with those tight fists. And then the larger JIC. 3 8 and 7 16 mixed in together. More just electrical stuff. Quarter and 5 16 More battery crap. This is metric 8 and 10. Half inch and 5 eighths. Put on top. Got some knee pads. Some bigger butt plugs. More butt plugs. Truth is, when I found them, I was at a hydraulic shop up around LA one time. I went in there to get a hose made. I saw them on the wall there. I said, golly, I had never seen those before. I said, and this has been years ago. So I said, I bought every size that they had there that I could get a kit on, you know? And then I got home and I said, oh, there's another one they have. So I called and ordered and they mailed it to me. But I haven't used near as many of them as I own. <laughs> Packaging, right? <laughs> <laughs> and here's a crimper for battery lugs and stuff. I like them. A pair of giant channel locks, a couple two inch, inch and seven eighths wrench, a 24 inch pipe wrench in there, or a crescent wrench, right? Really. Here, not very organized. Victor torch stuff, paint markers and pins and quick couplings and stuff like that. Flaring tool and some pins and tape measure. This is just run over ranches, you know, place to put them. Cotter pins, more grease search, metric and American down here. Airline stuff, brake airline stuff. Here's a bunch of sockets. These are the main ones I think that I use. Here's just more Victor torch stuff, little propane torch. And these guys right here, these 3 and man, they are the best. They are awesome. Ingersoll long hammer, which over the years I've lost all the little set screws, so I kind of, I got to where I can get on them now. Sometimes it gets in the way. Sometimes I have to shear them down, but there's so many bolts you can get loose with an air chipper, you know, that you just can't get in there. And I, I absolutely love mine. And I like this long reach right here too. You'd be surprised how that'll get in there and bust a, a line loose for you. I think that takes care of that box. This one is pretty ugly. Milwaukee grease gun, I love it. I love this Milwaukee bandsaw, love it. Eat your heart out, Cam. So then here's my aluminum uh, ridges and stuff that I like, but like I say, I really want the 36, or if I didn't get the 36, if I find a 48, that's what, I'd be happy with that too. And then these tab and dies, I bought from the Matco guy back in the early 80s, but I have lost a few over the years, but I like good tools. Those are made by Ace. Some bigger wrenches and stuff like that, long wrenches, big wrenches. There's four in one multiplier. And down here, these are awesome. Everybody should have own at least one or two sets of those. And I love the mats. Those are great. Uh, obviously, I love funnels. I've got a half a dozen. There's another air jack back there. I think a 20 ton. A lot of hose. A lot of hose. Don't ask me why. It just happened that way. Just oils and stuff, you know, and coolant and whatnot. More brake cleaner. I actually, when I get the brake cleaner, I get it by the you know, half a pickup load, you know, at a time, because it'll come on sale once or twice a year. And I get the, and there's nothing wrong with the Napa brand, but I like the CRC better, and usually I get that, but whenever I can't get it, I get this. I think that's it, guys. Don't let customers' problems become your problems. You're there to help them, but sometimes some people, if you let them, They'll get right up and make every bit of that problem your problem. You know, and you don't need to take that home with you. You need to go and do your job the best of your ability. Do what you said you're gonna do. Be there when you said you're gonna be there. And uh, you don't have to carry their weight. You're not the one that broke it. You're just there to help. Ah, uh, I love the weather. It's just great, you know. it's The weather out here is amazing. In Texas, it's a little harsher. <laughs> So I'm probably, I'm probably gonna have to get broke in again down there with that weather. Man, that humidity down there is tough.
I spent a couple of days working. It was 115 here on the last trip. I worked in the barn down there. It was 115 outside. I'm not sure what it was in the steel building, but it was a lot of breaks there. Taking a lot of breaks unloading. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you guys for watching today. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. And, and thanks a lot. Hope to see you in Texas. Are you an experienced heavy duty mechanic thinking about going on your own? Click the link in the description to fill out the form. Tecamo, your heavy equipment support network. Join Tecamo's network. Whether you want to film with them or appear on the channel for marketing and branding purposes, you're looking for more work in your area, or you need parts support, or a combination of all that, fill out the form, and if there's interest, someone will reach out. We hope you like this whole traveling thing we're doing. We will be traveling lots in 2024, so if you're a heavy duty mechanic that wants to be featured in service call, or do a truck tour, email media at techmohd.com or send a DM on Instagram. We expect you guys to be sliding into our DMs any day now. Fortis HD is sponsoring all this, so I'll be tagging along as well.